these two dwarven of Arnor, because I can't resist a good pun, or a bad pun. Um, so I got the bot, Botomir, in the Cabo of the Rings Discord to give me three random quests, and I didn't like one of them, so I got a couple more. Um, so I've determined that I'm going to be testing these decks against the Ringo's South, Road to Isengard and Assault on Osgiliath. I'm leaving Assault on Osgiliath until last because I'm probably going to do the Nightmare version. Uh, here we are for Ringo's South. Something has gone wrong in Octagon and it won't let me take control of the One Ring. So we're just going to have to imagine that that is over here. But otherwise, I think I'm ready to go. So. Yeah, so we set all these things aside out of play, shuffle the encounter deck, and then at the end of the planning phase, we do some stuff. So let's start. Okay, that is good. That's alright. So let's play Deep Knowledge. Do two and draw a couple of cards on each side. Okay. So, what I have not found is a cheap dwarf to get this deck straight up to five. So, that'll have to wait. But what I have found is Legacy of Durin, which I can play straight onto Dane to help out this deck. Now, got all three copies of Galadriel straight away. That's crazy. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a good harvest, naming Leadership. So that I can spend three for Feely and search my deck for Keely. And put him into play, thus getting this deck straight up to five dwarves. Uh, and then I lower my threat by one for Nori and draw a card for Legacy of Durin and I forgot to shuffle my deck. Then I draw a card. Okay. So I guess that's that. Now it is the end of the planning phase. So it's going to end up being two cards from each deck that get brought out. Okay, so. Uh, one to be played for zero cost, one to add to its owner's hand, one to discard, and one to shuffle into the deck. So, uh, I think I'm going to play the Hammersmith for no cost, because that gets this deck up to five dwarves. Um, and then I think the, the Axe Hand is the one I can most afford to lose. So that's the one that will be discarded. And then add a test of will to hand and shuffle Lure of Moria back into the deck. Then either shuffle Lust for the Ring into the encounter deck or raise each player's threat by five. I will shuffle Lust for the Ring into the encounter deck. And we advance to stage two. So the Red Horn Pass turns up, and we reveal cards until there's at least four threat in the staging area. Uh, okay, either exhaust hero you control or engage the Cravine. And after they engage, we reveal another card. Um, let's see, how bothered am I? Engaging them. 
Well, yeah, I'm not really bothered about engaging them, but it would mean more reveals, so I guess let's just exhaust Frodo. And the second card, Storm of Hells. Uh, so, there is no Warg enemy in the staging area. Um, okay, so I, I cannot choose the first one. I have to choose the second. Each Warg enemy gets minus 20 engagement cost until the end of the round. And since no Warg is in the staging area, it gains Surge. So if I now get a Warg, which I don't, it would have minus 20 engagement cost. And that's seven threat, which is definitely... Uh, at least four. And here we are. Okay, so the beginning of the quest phase. Seven threat in the staging area. It's fortunate that I have Dane. Uh, let's see. Definitely going to be questing with these for two, four, seven. Ten. Hmm. I want to keep things fairly clear, ideally. That'll be eleven, thirteen. What the hell? Sixteen. Nineteen by the power of dwarves. And we reveal Howling Wag and Hound of Sauron, which surges into the region. So three six additional threat. A total of thirteen against my nineteen willpower. And I'm incredibly glad for Dane at this point. Right, three, seven, nine, ten, thirteen. Against my four, seven, nine, twelve, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen. So I make six progress, which explores the Red Horn Pass. Now did the victory display. Now I have to travel. Regan or the Red Horn Foothills. I am going to definitely have to deal with one of these effects, so I think I'd rather not discard allies. So let's go to the Red Horn Foothills instead. Now, all wargs have minus 20 engagement cost thanks to that treachery earlier. So <coughs> I'm going to have to engage everything in the staging area. which is unfortunate. So let's see... Um, I suppose we want to do this. And the Kraban causes to avoid Reveal another card. Okay. And our shadow cards. So we defend and uh, when the Howling Wild attacks, place one damage on an active location. And we do this undefended, one damage, and we defend, additional attack, 
Right, so I'm now looking at a dead hero. That's a nice start. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I can really say that that's the fault of the decks. So let's just reset and try this again. Right, and the one ring is working this time. So, I really should not have mulliganed my first hand. Now I have lots of tactics that I can't play yet. But, never mind. Excellent. Okay, yeah. Starting with Arwen is nice. So, Airball Record Keeper, straight up to five dwarves. Expert Treasure Hunter. Want Nori. Yeah, Legacy Durin. Want Dane. Let's play Arwen since we got her. And that'll be that. So now, okay. Well, we're definitely discarding Arwen. One of these. Uh, let's. Uh, let's. Put ring mail into play for no cost since it's the one that actually has a cost. And so then I add deep knowledge to my hand and shuffle deep knowledge into my deck. And then I lost for the ring into the encounter deck rather than raise my threat by five. And advance to stage two. Threat on pass. Regan. Uh, I've discarded each ally he controls or raise threat by one for each ally he controls, so that's one threat each. And Hills of Holland. So that's enough threat. Five. Alright, this is not so bad. So, Frodo, well, actually, yeah, I suppose I've got. Since this is Defendi Frodo in Ringo's South. Uh, attack with no damage in each player raises his threat by two. Um that could be reasonable. Depends how much willpower I think I need. Three, six, eight. Ten. Thirteen. Yeah, I'm probably fine without using that. Oh, and we'll target 
bomber unless otherwise specified. So 15 versus 5 should be okay. Real additional six threat. Uh, so I make four progress. Now, uh, X damage on character seat control. I don't mind putting some damage on there. So let's engage the Howling Wog. Bomber will defend it. There goes Lost for the Ring. Attack for four and deal two damage. Oh, uh, quested successfully, so I'm going to say ally. It's an ally, so I added my hand. I've pretty much never used Expert Treasure Hunter, except in a Hero Gandalf context, so I'm <coughs> not used to it. Alright, move Frodo, control N. Ah, good harvest. That will be very useful, yes. Okay, so... See, I'm wary about playing this deep knowledge because of engagement costs. I suppose they're not too bad. Um, yeah, okay. Deep knowledge. Two cards on both sides. And okay, then Daron's runes. Scarred Sparking under the mountain. And Daron's runes again. Discard and spare Legacy of Durin. It's a shame that I've got hidden cash into my hand. But never mind. And I should have drawn an extra card for Ori and Thorin has an extra resource. I'll just draw the card now. Deep knowledge. Okay, now I'm a bit more worried about the threat, so I'll be cautious there. Good harvest tactics. So then let's spend Frodo's resources on a veteran axe hand, lower my threat, and draw a card. And then, uh, yeah, I do want to play the Blue Mountain Trader. Yeah, I can discard this. Lower my threat and draw a card. And then let's, um, yeah, but it's. Not really important for Owen to have the tactics icon right now. So I will transfer the trader over here. Uh, yep, I only need two leadership resources, so I'll transfer one over to Dane and pay three for Galadriel. Let's look at the top five cards of my deck. I can put Cram into play, and then it's four events that I want to, uh, actually, yeah, I want to draw, and then that, and that should be fine. So where do I want to put the Cram, is the next question. It's really got to be either... Dane or Orin or maybe Bomber. Thorin gets me more questing. Dane gets me the ability for him to defend and give his attack boost. Thorin gets me Bomber gets me just more defenses. Since 
Bomber is going to be a Sentinel, thanks to Arwen. And he is the best defender I have, thanks to the Ringmail, getting him up to 3 defense and 6 hit points. Yeah, let's go for that option. Let's pay two for King Under the Mountain. Exhaust it. Look at the top two. Ooh. I suppose, given that I have a sneak attack in hand, I want to take Gandalf. Discard Lure of Moria. Then let's pay two for an Erin Race Prospector. Discard three cards, one of which is a hidden cache, so Farron gains two resources. Actually, actually no, Farron does not gain two resources, Bomber gains two resources. And then I will take a look here for something, because I want to shuffle back into the deck, uh, which is probably either hidden cache, so that I could potentially trigger it again, or Lure of Moria. Um, let's go with Lure of Moria. Shuffle. Pay two law resources for a burning brand onto Bomber, and then play a very good tail, exhausting these two. Shuffle my deck, and take the top five. So, for four resources worth, I will unfortunately lose Biffa. But it's not so bad. So I've got another Prospector and a Warden of Healing. I'll trigger the Prospector to discard three cards. And then shuffle something back in. Which could be Biffa. Or it could be that hidden cache. Or some card draw. Maybe one bit other. Well, no. No, if I'm going to take an ally, it would be. If at all, I uh, haven't been losing significant attachments. And there's still one more handsmith in the deck. Um, oh, I'm supposed to be with my kinsfolk because that allows me to retrieve. Yeah, okay. Shuffle to be with my kinsfolk back into the deck. Because it will allow me to retrieve an ally at a later time. Fungo droid. Right, so nine threat in the staging area, so request for five, eight, eleven. 13, 15, 17, 17. This is seeming pretty good already. So, yeah, maybe we just leave it at 17. And we reveal another Hills of Holland. And combine uh, this is the card of this deck, so that's fine. I'll exhaust Ori rather than immediately engage the Crabine. Uh, so I've added five threat to the staging area. I make three progress one, two, three. Add to the victory display. And. Uh, each player assigns X damage on character he controls, X is the number of damage here, so let's put one damage on Galadriel and one damage on Ori.
So now I have to travel. Um, the hills of Holland will raise my threat. Regan will force me to discard allies. And the Red Holland foothills will force me to discard random cards from my hand. Don't want to be discarding random cards. I think Hills of Holland is the nicest of those effects, really. And now let's engage the Crabine here. And we get another Irigian. Let's deal out these shadow cards. Uh, Dane can. No, wait. I can take the Crabine undefended. It's got a non objective attack. Uh, hang on, I trigger Expert Treasure Hunter event. Yeah. And then we come to this. I do not have a spare Legacy of Durin. It is too far down for me to retrieve one with a Hammersmith, even if I had a Hammersmith. So let's discard Expert Treasure Hunter instead. And then deal that one damage to Owen. And then we'll use the Warden to heal those two damage. Bombo will defend here. Shadow would be cancelled, even if there was one. Now the Axe Hand attacks for three and kills the Crippine. And Thorin attacks for four and kills the Howling Wog. Gladriel is discarded at the end of the round. We're we'll ready up. Okay, so I remember about my extra resource in the draw here. And let's play Campfire Tales. King under the mountain, take a very good tail and discard hidden cash. Um, put the two resources onto Thorin. Uh, let's play another expert treasure hunter. Uh, let's play this deep knowledge. Pay three for a long bit elder. A very good tail, exhausting the elder and prospector. Shuffle my deck. Discard the top five. Only one ally. Alright, well, I'll take it. And then let's pay two for my third prospector. Discarding three. And let's look at what's in here. Quite like Gimli back. Or oh, we are not idle. Yeah, I've lost both copies of To Me on My Kinsfolk again. So 
So let's just take to me on my kinsfolk again. And now here, uh, I'd quite like to be able to play that test of will. <coughs> so actually, I suppose I'm saving resource for the test of will. Let's pass this Blue Mountain Trader back and pass the resource to Bomber. Ori. Yep. Okay. And that's my planning. Twelve threat in the staging area. So request for two, four, six, eight, ten. Thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, twenty, twenty-three. Surge. Storm Pals. This is the first player's card because this was a surge. Uh, okay, while well, going to nice engagement cost of taxi. Which one gets minus 20 engagement cost until the end of the round? Um, uh, let, let's just take the minus 20 engagement cost. And got two tree crowned hill, uh, which forces me to exhaust characters when it's explored. Alright. So that's an additional four threat. I make seven progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have to raise my threat by one for each damage, which is one in each case. Uh, now let's see. New Hills of Holland again. Still definitely don't want to do Irigian. Don't particularly want to do the foothills, so it's the hills or the three crowned hill. Uh, I think I can probably manage the three crowned hill. Maybe I'll end up regretting this, but we'll see. And then let's. Engage this Hand of Sauron. Put one damage there. Shadow him up, defend. Baron kills him. I forgot about Expert Treasure Hunter again. Ally. It's an ally. Frodo moves. Control N. Another sneak attack. Remember that I draw two. And then we get some extra resource. I draw over here. Finally, I found Steward of Gondor. Okay, so let's transfer this Blue Mountain Trader. Which resource can I do without one Thorns? Then let's play Steward of Gondor. Owen, play another Blue Mountain Trader, lower my threat by one, and draw a card. Uh, Alright. Hmm. Yeah, let's just go Good Harvest, Leadership. Lower my threat by one, draw a card, and add two resources to the hero's pool. Yeah, so what what I'm getting from this is that this deck definitely has issues if it doesn't get steward out quickly. I possibly have too much card draw 
not enough resources. Whereas this deck seems to just work fine, which is kind of to be expected. Let's take a little bit of Moria, discard the Miner, pay 3 for Dory, and what's that? So, once again, 12 threats in the staging area. And we can quest for two, five, seven, nine, twelve, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty one, twenty three. No, actually, yeah, I, I'm just going to, if I wreck on something, I'm going to move this trader, I'm going to move this deck over further this way to make sure that there's space, and then I'm going to move this trader, let's keep the traders separate. Over here, grab another resource so that I can play Galadriel again. Okay, no attachments in there. But plenty of dwarves, so let's just do it like that. And then Gladriel is obviously questing. So, where was I? 3, 6, 8, 11, 13, 15, 17, 20, 26, 30. Storm Howls. Okay, minus 20 engagement costs to all wags. Okay. Oh, and of course it surged because there was no wag in the staging area. So, 14 progress. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is gone. I need to exhaust. Uh, exhaust X. The players as a group exhaust X characters in play. Uh, so let's exhaust Ori and the Warden of Healing. And of course we have the quest. Uh, and we have to find some enemies. Okay, I forgot about this. Uh, so, ah, there is the Great Wild Chief. And I guess we could take a hand of Sauron. So, now we have to travel again. And we're going to be getting a bunch of damage on whatever location we choose, so let's go to the Hills of Holland. Now, all of these have minus 20 engagement costs, so I have to take all of them. 
Let's see, let's... Uh, oh, next bit, Treasure Hunter, ally. So let's see, I would like to have a Howling Wog here. The Great Wog Chief. Hmm, I suppose I can get decent attack on this side. Potentially. Here I just have advantage of lots of bodies. So probably like this. Maybe? And can I arrange that? So optional this. No, optional this. Um, then, yeah, let's just figure out, this has the higher engagement cost at that point, so it would end up the other way around. If I optional this one over here, then it would end up this way around. Okay, so that's my optional. And then this happens naturally, and then this happens naturally, and I trigger this forced effect. Okay, let's deal out some shadow cards. And Dane defense, okay, no damage. Hmm. That is a thing that I could do. Um, tactics. Chief is not immune to player card effects, so let's faint him as well. And then Bomber will defend both of these thanks to Cram. And there we go. Attacking back. I control at least five dwarfs, so Owen is two, so that's sort of four attack, so two damage. How much do I need to kill the Wild Chief? Nine. Three, five. Sneak attack Gandalf, reducing my threat by five. Attack for nine and kill the Great Wild Chief. Shadows are gone, Gandalf is back in my hand. Galadriel is discarded at the end of the round. And that's ready back up. Just 
So if I go over here, sort all of this out. Here, steward. Now, let's see. I'd quite like to keep one resource back for that sneak attack. I do have Lure of Moria available, and to be with my kinsfolk. Let's play down the third record keeper. Ah, yes, of course, we have idol. Doesn't have to be a hero that I control. Which could be relevant. To the dual miners. Actually, no. One Zigil miner and one veteran axe hand to the same effect. And then, hmm. There is something to be said for that. Why we are not idle, exhaust a bunch of dwarves. Give the resources to Owen. Yeah, okay. I transfer Blue Matter Trader over here. Remove resource from Dane to Thorin. Then I will play We Are Not Idle, exhausting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 dwarves to add 12 resources to line and draw a card. So now let's a three for a battle master. Well, my threat and draw a card. Uh, two for another miner. Lower my threat and draw a card. Another three for another battle master. Lower my threat and draw a card. Two for a blue mountain trader. Lower my threat. Draw a card. And then let's hold on to the rest, the remaining two resources. Okay, three, six, ten threat in the staging area. Quest with Frodo. Two, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, eighteen. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, thirty-six, twenty-seven. Since I then play Lord of Moria, thirty-six,
Unless I want to save the Lure of Moria until after Dane defends. Then I could leave it at 25. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll do it like that, but I'm not bothering to re exhaust all the dwarves and put my Lure of Moria back and so on just to do it again. Okay. Mark and bit of cold each final two lines. Uh, okay, let's cancel that because that would be a ridiculous amount of threat. Uh, so we have only two threat. We make thirteen progress. One, two, three, four. Let's pay one more spirit resource for both. Uh, new quests for an additional three. Uh, let's trigger expert treasure hunter ally. It's not an ally. Uh, we raise our threats by five. We advance the quest again. So we make doors of Durin the active location. I brought him in the water to the staging area. Spell all tokens from the ring bearer and place it in each card attached to it. Put down under water and water. There we go. Yep. Both of returns to my hand. And now I have to travel to another location. Right on foothills, maybe? I have plenty of cards in here. Right on foothills. Uh, so, currently, the staging area is considered to be engaged with each player. <coughs> and we need to do six damage to it to get Frodo back. Each player right to the text both dollars. Um Yeah, okay, so we want that down here. Do you want that to reach active location? It so we deal out shadow cards of the watcher first, and we've run out of cards in the encounter deck. Okay, so Bomber has three defense, it's attacking for six, that is fine. He takes three damage. Just move that so I can see the show a bit more clearly. And then let's pay one and exhaust Mirabal Record Keeper to Ready Bomber so he can defend it again. Take one damage. Uh, let's see, how much are these battle masters attacking for? With Dane ready, which. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so so I clearly I must have. I have to have already played Lure of Moria by this point, so I don't get to get that extra defense out of Dane. That's fine. Um. So, with Dane ready, if I manage to not defend with him, which might be difficult, then 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they usually attack for nine. Um, I need eleven attack. Oh no, no they attack for ten with Dane ready. Nine with him exhausted. I need eleven to get Frodo back. So that can be done by a Battlemaster and Owen, with Dane having defended. So long as I don't lose any of these dwarves. And then the rest of my stuff can kill these howling wogs easily. Should put this other howling wog over here, I guess. Um Whereas here, um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to kill that much. Hmm. Hardy leadership would also be a useful card to have. Seems that I forgot that one. Okay, I'm going to take this undefended. So, plus one attack. So I'll exhaust Dory to put the damage on him. He's killed by it. This has no shadow, so let's have Ori do it. And over here, Dane defends one and the other. Uh, I guess Nori will defend it and take one damage. Let's use my one of healing to heal up these two. And now for attacking back, uh, the only attack I have other than Thorin is a long dead elder. So I can attack for four and kill a hand of Sauron. These all place damage on the active locations when they attack, so right now. Attacking for four, let's just check again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Frodo is back, exhausted with one damage on him. Okay, actually, I'll save my healing until Frodo comes back. That doesn't really matter. Wait, did I put... Did I... No. No, that's right. Um, yes. Uh, so attacking for nine. Attacking for two, four, five, six. Discard. Shadow cards. If there was another attack from the Watcher. That. That is the thing that I forgot about. Hmm. Um, so, okay, that's fine. So, if Dane defended the Watcher, then I took the other Howling Wag undefended, and everything else played out the same. Frodo moves back over here. Control N. 
Maybe extra card, extra resource. Not here. Steward. Three for Healy. Call Feely out of the deck. Shuffle it. Can lower my threat by one and draw a card. Uh, hmm. I don't know that I care enough to pick up my tails at this point. Let's see, are there any attachments that I'd like back? Lexi of Durin? Not a big deal. Cram. Could be useful. It's that or another Warden of Healing. Maybe the Warden would be better. Given the amount of damage currently in play. Phase, right. Okay, so there is eleven threat in the staging area. I need to make 14 progress. Let's play two for sneak attack. Gandalf. Lowering my threat by five. And to me are my kinsfolk. Pulling Gimli out of my discard pile. So let's quest for two, five, eight, ten, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty one, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty seven, twenty nine, thirty one, thirty four, forty, forty six, fifty, fifty three. 56, 60, 61. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, I don't want to exhaust Dane, so I guess I have to engage. Which does this? Oh, and I don't have another test. Will wait. I'm drawing two. I should have brought back test of will. Really, how many allies do I have to draw? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's the oh. Okay, that then that renders this little plan of mine really stupid. Um, yeah, and actually come to think of it, I should have played Campfire Tales, and I would not have drawn a test of will. Uh, so, I guess that goes on there, or, hmm, yeah, 
Which means that I make three progress on there. Do quest successfully, so ally. It's not an ally. And the Watcher is going to start killing heroes because I foolishly thought that I would not need many defenses because I thought that I was going to win the game. Okay. So, we do our shadows. So let's see. Um, I exhaust this one of healing. To heal Bomber and Dane. And Dane defends the Watcher. It's got an objective attachment. Um, I suppose I'm probably running out of water at this point, so I can use Legacy of Durin. Uh, no, wait. No, wait, I need to heal Dane twice for him to survive. Um, unless. Okay, let's, let's say that I R went Dane, since he was the only. Character that I left ready apart from the ones of healing. I am willing to red combat for yeah. undefended attack. Damage from this attack must be assigned to the active location. So fortunately, it says the active location, not each active location. Now, uh, so let's take the Howling Log, undefended. Bomber takes three damage. Let's take the Hound of Sauron, undefended. Thorin takes four damage. And my Warden of Healing will defend against the Watcher and die. But somehow I am not dead. That extra hit point from Ringmail saving Bomber's life. Extra resource there. Make sure I draw my card. Steward. <coughs> right, so yeah, I could get that crown. Uh, Snowdrifts. Snowdrift is not an issue because there's already three brothers there. Unless I get another one. Which I suppose is possible. So I guess just on the off chance let's play let's discard Snowdrift. Um, we'll need to play leadership cards on this side, so let's pass this trader back. And now I can play Lure of Moria if everything goes pear shaped. Now, here, 
more than tracking it turned up rather too late. Let's take a look in here. There is a taste of will, which I will retrieve with Dwarven Tomb. And of that, nothing else should really matter. Should. So, let's try this again. 11 threat in the staging area. 2, 6, 9, 15, 21, 24, 27, 33, 37, 40, 42, 44. I'm not going quite as all out this time. Bit of cold. So I am going to cancel that because it would cause me to hit 50 threat on both decks. And. Storm of Howls. Okay, so I guess each Wag gets minus 20 engagement cost until the end of the round and against Surge. Right on foothills. So I make 29 progress. One, two. This causes me to discard six cards from my hand at random. But it doesn't matter. Because I also explore the doors of Durin and thus win the game just in time. I can trigger Expert Trigger Hunter one last time. It was not an ally. <sighs> okay, so that kind of worked. I mean, this deck clearly ramps up pretty fast with very good tail and so on. Uh, possibly loses a bit of steam at the end when it's run out of deck. Uh, so you just kind of hope that by that point you have everything you could ever need. Uh, I mean, th this is why in dwarf decks in the past I've sometimes used Will of the West so I can shuffle everything back in. I suppose, yeah, I didn't lose that much that was really important, because all that's really important is lots of allies. Whereas this one, if I don't get steward early, clearly I have issues getting started, but if I do get steward early then my hand wouldn't have ended up quite so full, I don't think. It is a bit difficult to pay for leadership stuff, but Blue Mountain Traders can help with that. Um, and of course, this deck being able to use We Are Not Idle, this was one of the things that I kind of had in mind when building that putting. Because We Are Not Idle doesn't have to target hero, you control just any hero. While you can do the standard combo of We're Not Idle to add all the resources to the leadership hero and then spend three of them to play Lure of Moria, I figured with Thorin having his natural resource generation, I had decent chances of him gathering enough resources to play Lure of Moria without needing to be the target of We're Not Idle, which of course allows me to put the resources over here. There might be with how fast this deck went down, there might be something to be said for actually flanking under the mountain on this side instead. But then I suppose I only had nine cards left. So it's not that big a deal, I don't think. In general, this seemed to work out 
pretty well. Uh, aside from that one slight oversight at the end where I really should have... Well, <coughs> of course, I say I, I really should have dwarven tombed my test of will the previous round, except if I had, then I would have used it on the first treachery, a uh, bit of cold. And so snowdrifts would still have stopped me pushing through. I suppose the real oversight was that I didn't actually need to quest for 61. I could have quested for considerably less than 61, still been certain that I would win if I didn't get snowdrifts, but had enough characters ready to handle all my combat. in that eventuality. Uh, but yeah, okay, so the you know, first test of these decks worked pretty well. Um, they, they seem to function as intended. And dwarves are still crazy, and I, I defy anyone to say that Dane is not still the most powerful hero in the game. Uh, I'll be moving on to Road to Isengard next. Uh, so that, that will be linked in the description, as will the Assault on Wars Gilead, assuming that I upload all three. Bye.